You're listening to The Governor's Podcast, which is hosted by school governors, for school governors, and for all involved in or impacted by education governance. On The Governor's Podcast, we have open, honest, and transparent discussions about governance in the UK education sector, sharing and providing insights into the realities of entering the boardroom, sitting around the governing board table, and leaning in. Hello, I'm Sean Warmington, and as an experienced and qualified governance professional, I support schools and academies at trust and local level in driving governance excellence. I'm also the founder of the National Black Governors Network and the National Association of School and College Clerks. Collectively, with sector partners, we work with individuals and organisations seeking positive change at a strategic and operational level. Hey, it's Olivia D. Hines here, an unapologetic millennial black woman who is changing the face and space of education governance. I specialize in brand management, digital strategy, and generational diversity, bringing governance into the 21st century. I'm purpose-led and people-focused, bridging the gap between the then and the now. And you're listening to The Governor's Podcast. Okay, let's get into today's topic. Today's topic is conferences. Okay. Governors, conferences, clerks, conferences, conferences and events. The okay. what, where, why, when and how. Yes. <laughs> I think that I think that's something really good to kind of dive into because we're at the start of another academic year yep. and well, we're we're moving through the autumn term. I can't believe that September's pretty much done um, yeah. already. And when you think about it, conferences in my mind as an initial thought is a great way to kind of learn about the space, whether you're a new governor or mm-hmm. you're experienced, uh, meaning you've been in the space for some time and you just need mm-hmm. a refresh or a jolt. I feel like sometimes it's that, it's like, a bit of a shake in terms of, oh, I didn't know that, or that's yeah. something I should know, or wow, is that coming down the pipeline? Oh, is that happening in other school settings? Yeah. And then it's also anyone who is completely um, disconnected or unclear or, mm-hmm. or uh, like has no concept of what governance and education governance is all about. I think conferences is a good way to kind of just download. I mean, I can imagine it can be very overwhelming with the information. Well, that's what, yeah. But it's a good so, way to just get a, like a, a snapshot of all the different areas that governance could include in finding your place. I think it's important to almost distinguish between training and conferences. Yes, because, of course. Because, yeah, it's important that um, as a governor, um, training, as far as I'm concerned, is 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 not optional. You have mm-hmm. to, and mm-hmm. this is on on the back of me doing my annual safeguarding yesterday for two hours online. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> but I got it. I got it. One hundred percent. Twenty out of twenty. Anyway, well done. Um, so so yeah, it's important. The training is non negotiable, and they're very specific, very subject based, um, and related to. Um, you know, what the governor needs to know. Conferences, I think, for some, um, may be seen as option, optional extra. Okay. Or um, because of the timing, they may not be able to attend. Mm-hmm. Because there are there are governors, like if I think about the, the two schools where I govern, one is a, a school governor, one is a mat trustee, we don't, have conferences organized by either of those organizations Mm -hmm. but because um one or both are linked to other organizations i'm able to attend those conferences so for instance i know the nga have regular conferences as well as their annual conference i i i think um they may have regional ones some are online some are, are, are in person but i'm i'm noticing that um there is definitely a blend now when okay. we were pre-COVID, everything was 
in person, post COVID or during COVID, it was all virtual. And now we're getting a, a shift between the two. We've got the Academy show coming up, I think in November in, mm-hmm. in Birmingham, which is um, a sort of conference, but also uh, an event where they have exhibitors and things like that. Um, the CST, the Confederation of School Trusts, had a conference in the summer term that I attended, a, governor, a governance conference, which was really, really good. And that was in person. And um, I know that Governor Hub have also um, got conferences that they um, put on and, and organise. Mm-hmm. And we ourselves... Um, hosted, um, created and hosted the National Association of School and College Clerks conference, conference. <laughs> on the 1st of September, which mm-hmm. was um, which was um, amazing. And it was virtual, virtual mainly because the clerks are spread so widely and also to significantly reduce the cost mm-hmm. in terms of travel to enable as many clerks to attend as possible. And just yesterday, at the time of recording, mm-hmm. Governors for Schools finished a mammoth. Yeah. I, mean, I completely <laughs> underestimated, completely <laughs> underestimated how big this thing was. Because, <laughs> because when I'm invited to speak at an event, I then just focus on my slot. Of course, yeah. And my topic. Mm-hmm. But it was only as the, the the promos and everything started to come out and I went, oh, I wonder who else is speaking, thinking I'd probably see four or five names. And it was like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> like, oh my Lord. This is you a know. full lineup. <laughs> it is an absolute full lineup. And you now have had, the, seen it from both sides. So you've yes. been the host, um, co-host, back end for an event where you invite um, people to, and you've also been an employee now. Mm -hmm. Um, Same role in terms of host, inviting, um, coordinating from the back end. So my Mm -hmm. first question to you, though, is prior to the recent two days with Governors for Schools, Mm -hmm. have you, in any of your governing roles, attended a Governors Conference? I, w- I, is, I don't know whether this is a pregnant pause or a dramatic pause that I'm doing because I'm genuinely thinking. <laughs> um, I mean, I've attended a conference. I attended a Governor Hub co- uh, conference in the summer term of last academic year. So this would have been June, July 2023 as a speaker um, in Manchester. Um, mm-hmm. And I did wear one of my hats that I wear in the governance space. So I was there as a um as one of the hosts of the governor's podcast um Mm -hmm. and also to share my own personal journey as a a school governor young school governor whilst I'm still uh okay I rephrase but in terms of as a delegate as a delegate nothing comes to mind so I'd have to say no yeah I've not heard I've not heard you mention attending a conference as a delegate which is why I asked the question and which is why I said at the top of my um, um, talk that um, some governors attend and some find it optional or do it optional. That is a good point because I do the training. And so yeah. when I first started this episode, I said that the because I've now done a full two days of conference content download, because <laughs> as an employee, employee of governors for schools um to support the the execution of the conference i i found that i i was in full attendance to every session but never attended as an attendee because i was the host or i was in the back end supporting with tech or something so i was there and i was learning as a governor but not with my school governor hat on as a Mm -hmm. delegate I was there to to support the internal team with the delivery of the conference. And mm-hmm. so it did make me think, it felt like training because there was a, a date and a time and a topic, a date mm-hmm. and a time and a topic, and it served a purpose. It mm-hmm. is to inform, it is to make people feel included in the dialogue, it is to empower, to inspire you to move forward. Um, 
But if I was a delegate, I would see it as um, CPD. So it wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily be explicit training where you get a certificate at the end for um, for doing safeguarding or for doing health and safety or for looking at school improvements specifically, look at financial budget budgeting, like that's the training piece that you signed up for. But mm -hmm. at a conference, I feel like it's a case of bonus training. That's why I use the word training because I feel like there's a lot that you're still learning. And I think it really does depend on how you enter the space and what the, um, what the organization, how the organization packages that information. Yeah, I think in, in my opinion, conferences, mm -hmm. and maybe this is because I'm a speaker and usually at most events, I'm either speaking mm -hmm. or part of a panel or something. So I use attendance at a conference as a time to just be a governor. Right. Not not to impart knowledge, but right. to I mean, we would we would say to feed. Yes, to feed. Mm -hmm. I see it as as an opportunity for me to feed. I mm -hmm. don't I don't want to be acknowledged. I don't want mm -hmm. to be um pulled out or called upon or even when we have the round table discussions, mm -hmm. I don't I don't want anybody to know who I am. Okay. Because then it's almost like, oh, Sharon, you're a speaker. You can feed back. You know, when you when you, <laughs> you like, who's going to feed back from the table? No, I don't want to do that. I just want to be. I just want to be. I want to be like everybody else, feeding off whatever is being delivered from the stage, whether that's I, a virtual stage or a, or a real in person stage. Can I say this? Can I say it like this then? And I'm going to use me as the example, and you say if you feel the same mm -hmm. that. Because we have um, experience and it's part of our um, professional service delivery offer, we are speakers, but we mm -hmm. are also um, volunteers. We are also school governors in various settings. Mm -hmm. Do you find that even with all the hats that we wear and all the spaces we enter, you are toggling between, and I'm going to use my example, between being Olivia D. Hines and being Olivia. So for yes. you, it would be being Sharon, Sharon, Sharon Warmington and being or just Sharon. Sharon. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds like the delegate of you would be Sharon. Yes. But the speaker would be Sharon Warmington. Yes. And I am finding that I'm toggling between that even more now. Mm the more that I'm in the space, the more that I'm passionate about um, getting more governors on boards and, and uh, on school boards and trust boards, et cetera. It's like, okay, I'm invited to speak here. So in that, I've got to, in that space, I've got to put my hat on as Olivia D. Hines and I'm mm -hmm. coming in with my story. I'm coming in with my knowledge and my experience of school governance. I'm coming in as a, as a host of the government as podcast because that's mm -hmm. built up a community and a following but yeah. then sometimes I just want to be Olivia or live for people who are more familiar with me and work more closely with me where I'm that school governor who is who is thinking about okay am I how long is too long in this school setting or yes. I'm a committee chair am I still adding value as a committee chair as I've been one for the past three going on four years and okay I'm also a link governor for um, equality, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Am I doing all that I can there? I'm being pulled in to be a part of the send audit review for the school. How do I serve in that setting? Okay, yeah. I'm being asked to be a part of the interview panel for senior leaders. How do I serve in that regard? And then it's a case of, is there an exclusion panel that I'm asked to come across and, and do? And in those spaces, I'm Olivia. Mm -hmm. I'm mm. not Olivia D. Hines. I'm not speaking on all my knowledge I am trying to put things in practice put in practice that, absolutely. that I've learned from other people yeah. and so I felt that across the past 48 hours yeah because I know what it's like to be a speaker to be a mm -hmm. public speaker and come in and serve and it was absolutely amazing to be a part of the internal team and just watch others and learn from others well that deliver it's funny. Yeah, it's funny you should say that because 
the the panel discussion I was in yesterday on effective challenge mm-hmm. and the recordings for these are are, are coming out so if mm-hmm. anybody's listening to this who who were able to attend then I know that governors of schools are releasing them um and my my co-host or speaker mm-hmm. um Jeff never met before amazing and I was just like he was dropping gems and I was picking them up you know? <laughs> and and I had to keep reminding myself that I wasn't there as a delegate. Yes. Because I literally had my notebook open next to me. And as he was speaking, and luckily he speaks like me, meaning that he can do a monologue for, for a good few minutes uninterrupted. And I could just, I could almost be between speaker and delegate in that in that space but I've had to learn to do that Mm -hmm. um you know just so that I can continue to grow and develop in my in my governorship so speaking of um conferences for um schools and things I know that um local authorities um occasionally I'm not going to say all local authorities organize governor conferences for um, maintained schools but I have spoken at some so I know it is more common practice than not Um, and in academy trusts I know that there whilst there's training that takes place there's only one trust that I'm aware of that I'm um, that I've been involved in no, that's a lie because I've spoken at other trusts. <laughs> um, but but one where I'm where I'm thinking where I clerked, um, rather than being invited in as a speaker, there's only one trust that I was aware of that I was involved in that held a governors conference for all of their governors, and it was an in person one. Um, you know, they they were in a, a trust of about um, at the time I was there about six or seven schools at the at the time I was there but they saw it as an important part of the calendar to have an annual governor's conference. And it was on a Saturday morning and every single governor was invited. I know when I was at um, um, Ormiston recently, Ormiston Academies Trust, they had an annual conference and all the chairs of governors were invited to that conference. And one of the things that I sort of suggested um, to them and sort of handed it over to um, my colleague as she returned back from maternity leave. And you might want to think about having a, a, a you know an annual conference for all of the governors because I'm I'm very aware there are a lot of events that are pitched at governors, but nine times out of ten the responsibility lands on the chair of governors, right, rather yeah. than any other governor. Mm-hmm. Now I will go wherever I want to go. Meaning, if my if 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 my school that I'm governing in or clerking in um, is a member of the NGA, then I will sign up for the governors' conference. I don't care that it's not badged for clerks or, or governors, especially if nobody else from the organisation is going, mm-hmm. just so that I can hear about anything that's going on and report back. Mm-hmm. I've paid from my own company to attend conferences and events where there is a a fee again as part of my CPD but also to feed back to um, any organization that I'm involved in and so I I think the message for governors um, would be the conferences that are there are there for you Mm -hmm. if you hear about one Mm-hmm. You can attend. Don't be afraid mm-hmm. to put your hand up around the, uh, AO, AOB is a great time to say, <laughs> you know, I see there's a conference happening, um, at, you know, in a couple of weeks. Can I be um, registered for that? It's not going to cost you anything, even if there is a cost The the yeah. organization, the school or the academy or the mm-hmm. academy trust will pay for that mm-hmm. and it's important that if you're able to go i know that most conferences are held during the the working day mm-hmm. occasionally you may get them on a weekend and i know that weekends are precious but where possible and most organizations you can see their calendar of events on an annual basis so you can plan ahead i think it's important if you can go that you should Before we go further into this topic, let's hear from our sponsors. 
Governor Hub. Governor Hub is proud to support the Governor's Podcast. As a leading provider of online governance support, we know that confident and well-equipped governors bring about positive and meaningful change. So when you've been inspired to do your best by really leaning in on the topics that matter, you can rely on us for the tools to help your board work better, the guidance and training to develop your skills, and a secure online body of evidence for when it matters most. Visit thehoot.news to join us and feel part of something bigger. Talking about attendance, and I know we had this conversation in um, several episodes ago, so at this point it's probably over a year, 18 months, maybe even two years ago, when we talked about the difference between virtual and in-person, um, and you mm-hmm. alluded to this when you talked about the NASC conference um, that we hosted on the 1st of September this year, 2023. Um, and making it virtual so that people could attend. So there are trusts that do um, conferences. I know that because the school where I govern is a part of a trust that does conferences. Yeah. But they're in person and they're on Saturday mornings. And that is a huge barrier for me personally, especially because of your location then. because of my location um because i i'm in manchester um the school is in birmingham i do my best to go to everything else mm-hmm. i attend all the meetings um i think i probably have sent apologies once and felt absolutely guilty for doing mm-hmm. that um and i do my best to do my school visits um, for the link governor visits and learning walks, etc. cetera. Um, if I'm asked to do any additional responsibilities, I try and make myself available, um, especially if mm-hmm. there's um, panels to be a part of. Um, I think with my hat as committee chair, then that kind of gives me some, uh, that puts my name on a list of who to contact if we need this or if we need that. Um, and so sometimes when I'm trying to juggle my work-life balance and trying to um, make decisions on uh, what to say yes to, what to say maybe to, and what to say no to, um, Mm -hmm. in-person conferences on a weekend, which is during my personal time, that is hard for me to say yes to that as well, on top of everything else I say yes to. And so- Can I push back? You can push back. Um, because I feel like yeah. everyone is entitled to an opinion. Um, yeah. um, but at the same time, it's like, I appreciate that the conference happened. Um, mm-hmm. And I know that I'm very much a believer that you're not going to please everyone. So you're not. Absolutely not. And so I totally understand that. And mm-hmm. I also recognize as as someone who has experienced being self-employed and providing a service, not everyone is your client and not everyone is going to be the right fit for you. So basically with my background in tutoring, I know that not everyone's going to say that Olivia is the right tutor for their child, which is fine. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind hearing no's. And so for me, it's like, that is one of the areas that I've been wrestling with because it's so natural and easy for me to say yes to everything. But then I find myself feeling like, okay, I'm losing myself in things. And so can I I say no? So that's when I exercise my no. You have the right to say no without explanation. That's just a human fact as far as I'm concerned. My pushback is mainly because I think that conferences, governor conferences that are organised by the organisation themselves, so rather than the ones we've mentioned earlier by um, an organization working in the space. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you're part of a, of a mat and if the mat is organizing a conference or you're part of a diocese and the diocese is organizing a conference or, you know, however, whichever, 
I think it's an opportunity to um, engage more closely outside of a meeting where you're making decisions with your fellow governors. That's why I would push back. And if it meant that out of the three committee meetings that you've got where you're not chairing, you sacrifice one, i.e. you give apologies to that, to allow you to attend the conference, even if it, I do understand the Saturday and the travel, and I, I get all of that, but I'm speaking to you, but more widely to um, mm -hmm. our listeners. Mm -hmm. That if there's just one conference, and there's usually just one governor's conference per year in any organisation that's putting yeah. it together, it's not it's not a termly event. It's one per year. I just think that it just allows you to take your foot off the gas, meaning, as I say, you're not there, you don't have papers to read, you haven't got decisions to make, you're in the space to feed, but also it allows you an opportunity to get to know your governing colleagues in a more relaxed, informal setting. The speakers and the hosts will be running around and making sure that everything's working and that the, the teas and coffees are, are, are there on time and the food comes out hot or cold or whichever, you know, whatever's been provided. You, as an attendee, can relax. And I think that is something to be considered because what that... Do, I have found out more about my governor colleagues in situations like that than I have around the governing board table where we attend meetings on a, on a regular basis, even years down the line. Um, one of the school, my, the first school, your school, where I was a parent governor, there would be an annual dinner for, for, for governors. And so, no, we didn't have a conference, but we had an annual dinner because I think that we give so much as volunteers I almost see the governor conference as a way that the organization, the school is giving, is giving back. That's how I see it. I'm not saying that's always the case, but I'm saying that that's how I choose to view it. And I know as a, a, like yourself, Saturdays are very precious. Um, and so I have to challenge myself on what I'm doing when, but I do like to attend at least one conference per year. Last year it was CST that I did. I think it was in, in June. Um, and uh, I spoke yesterday at the Governors for Schools one, um, but I've got some in the calendar, and I will pick the one that I will I will go to, depending on the topic and, and things like that. But it, it is an opportunity to just meet different people that you wouldn't normally be in communication with. So that's that's my pushback. It's not it's not a negative. It's not to say you've got to do this or you've got to do that. But it's just it's just a um, the other side. And I want to say that everything you've said is all the reasons why I want to attend. Literally, my only issue is the day that it's on. That is, that is it. Mm. That is it. Because mm. if I'm, if I have a vulnerable, I feel like I'm having a bit of a vulnerable moment with you, but we also with our listeners about um, being a governor, being someone who's passionate about education governance, being someone who wants to be present and lean into the space and mm. add poor value and connect mm. and network and especially because I've come from a decade of working in isolation I know what it's like to work on my own I'm very comfortable mm. in my own company and it's only within the last um nine months or so where I've regularly engaged with the team through my um, mm -hmm. part-time role at Governors for Schools. And I've absolutely loved that because I'm naturally a people person. I, I engage with people very well. Um, it's just, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a bit of an alien because I also am, am very comfortable being on my own, but I'm never socially awkward. And so- Your mother's child. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and being a governor for nearly six years, um, I like being able to engage with my fellow governors when I turn up for meetings uh, it's not just about the meeting it's not just about the agenda and the papers and stuff I will walk mm -hmm. in and ask people how their last holiday was or you know how's it going with if I know their child is in a club or something or you know mm -hmm. if I if I see that they're wearing new shoes or something I will throw a compliment in their direction so I like those personal touches with other people mm -hmm. 
And so Mm -hmm. to share something that I haven't expressed outwardly with you, but with Mm -hmm. our listeners about Mm -hmm. my governor hat is that I know that my trust does a conference every year. And as you say, it is usually once a year if a conference happens for any organization because there's a lot of planning and um Mm. and logistical aspects to pull off Mm -hmm. a conference and before I got that email this year I don't even think I told my trust this so maybe this is something that I'll throw my takeaway to actually take action on but before I got that email this year um of when the the conference was going to be taking Mm -hmm. place I said, for once, I would really like the conference to happen on a weekday because I actually do want to go. I do want to mingle Mm. with governors from other schools. And I know it's not possible because then I know it's not necessarily- They're in school. (laughs) Yeah, the the teachers are in school. school. (laughs) The school is full of children. And and then governors are, you know, they have full-time lives. So whether whatever your working commitments are, but I was just like, because- And that could be because of my self-employed background in terms of like, I'm used to working very awkward hours. My weekends have become Mm -hmm. precious to me. It's the only time where I could say to myself, working self-employed, this is actually my time because you don't really Mm -hmm. have annual leave structures when you're, when you're working for yourself and you're, you're grafting or you're hustling or whatever, or grinding, whatever language you use. So the weekends have become very precious. I know my Saturdays as like a habit um, and and a ritual in terms of that's when I'd go and see my grandparents. That's when I'd like do the food shopping. That's when I do the weekly food shop with my mm-hmm. sister or that's when I'm, you know, curled up on the sofa with my cat. It's when I'm reading. It's when I'm resting. Mm-hmm. It's when I'm, you it's know. It's your off time. It is my off time. off time. And so literally when that email hit <laughs> and as soon as I saw a Saturday, I, as a governor, was gutted. I'm, I must mm. admit, I was like, that's another one I haven't been able to attend. I attend so many other things mm. and I do want to be able to mingle cross school and um, hear about the other uh, schools in the trust and the academies in the trust. But it's literally the day. It is literally mm. the day. Not the date, not the time, but mm. the day. Because if it was okay. weekday, I feel like I would make it work because I make it it work to travel to everything else during the week yeah. um so I, I can take time off work or I can find a day when I'm available like I'll make anything mm. else work but the day and I think and that's I think, what it is yeah I think for you as well your lo- your current location also prohibits that mm-hmm. because it wouldn't just be I think you know even if the conference is half a day so it's, it's a 9 30 start mm-hmm. finishing at lunchtime you know, to somebody who who's like 20 minutes out, that is half a day. Mm-hmm. But you're talking about traveling the night travel, before. <laughs> stay, yeah, stay overnight. Then, and then, yeah, so it's it's a day and a half, really. So I, so I, I get it. I do, mm-hmm. and I do so absolutely ju- get it. I think by moving it, though, to weekdays, you rule out staff governors. Of course, you know, I know. You, I know. You know. So it, and it's, I think, it's not I think it easy. Kind of, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, that six of one half a dozen of the other Mm. um and so that's why I'm just like I've had to I've had to when I say wrestle with that myself is that because it it's like what happens in life um you could get a hundred positive comments but you get that one negative one and that's Mm. the one you just seem to remember it's it's yeah you focus on that um and so for me it's like despite everything that I do in terms of my my commitment as a governor it's funny mm-hmm. how me not attending that trust conference or trust wide conference is the thing that makes me feel like I'm falling short as a governor how I'm wrestling with that because I know that yeah. I am a valuable governor and I know that I'm doing um a lot and I, going above I and beyond, guarantee. but that bit is making me think yeah damn am I falling short am I not doing enough but no no and I think it's important that um we collectively as governors and trustees um listening to this um recognize that your input is seen um and valued so you need to deal with that issue yourself I know that's what they are it's a big turtle no yeah 
nobody else is nobody else is thinking that mm -hmm. i think um what is evident we we know as clerks we know it as chairs we know it as as heads we know it we know those who are committed and those who are not mm -hmm. irrespective of you know you could get um governors who are always at the conference always there <laughs> but you can't get them you can't get them on a panel you can't get them to attend committee meetings and they barely attend governing board meetings so they so they're going for in my opinion they're going for the socializing at the conference <laughs> and the food or the venue rather than do you understand what I mean yeah so so you know um don't beat yourself up all mm -hmm. I would probably say to you is and say this to anybody else out there as well if you haven't if the conference happens every year and you haven't been able to attend for some of the reasons like what Olivia has mentioned then I would say before you leave that governorship um try and do one mm -hmm. um try and do one because I just I just think it will um it would just be a nice thing um for you to see um as well as be part of um, based on, you know, I always, I always gain something from whatever event I attend, even if, you know, all the speakers bombed, um, <laughs> you know, no, and that happened, you know, come on, let's get real. We do know, you know, <laughs> I've been to events where, you know, it's like, seriously, you know, wake me up when you're done kind of thing, <laughs> but I've met somebody and made a connection. Mm -hmm. So I always make sure that no matter what, there's at least where one thing. I go, I take at least one thing away. So it's never, I don't feel as if it's wasted. Mm -hmm. So if I've spent two hours on the train getting to London to attend an all day event, only to turn around and spend two hours on a train back, mm -hmm. I've got to come back with something. Mm -hmm. So if the speakers aren't doing it for me, then during the, the break times, during lunchtime, I am on the hunt mm -hmm. for somebody. <laughs> Honestly, I do it yeah. purposely and I and I and I'm very strategic about it because there's nothing worse than feeling as if you've wasted your time. 100%. I hear it's that. It's the worst feeling in the world and you can't always guarantee that what you're hearing from the stage is going to be what you need. Mm -hmm. So it's it's your responsibility again in my opinion to get what you need from that situation. Yeah. So if that's somebody's phone number, somebody's email address that is going to help you to move forward or your, your, your board is looking for a new chair or a new trustee or a new governor and this mm -hmm. person is coming to the end of their term in that particular school, which is down the road, then that's an opportunity worth pursuing. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I'm, I'm aware, find something that you can walk out of that event with. And that's why... As I said yesterday with Jeff, I had my pen and my paper <laughs> and my cup was full and overflowing just on the back of that. We've already emailed each other um, oh, about yes. some collaborative work that we're going to do. And it's oh, like, wow. absolutely. Because, I love that. You know, it's, it's, it's being proactive mm -hmm. and you never know, you know, I had no idea. I've never heard of him before. Mm -hmm. Never, never knew what he would be like. And we just connected. And you couldn't, each other. you couldn't tell. Like, honestly, as someone watching it, I re I mean, I'm your daughter and I, I pretty much know your life, right? Let, yes, let's you be do. honest. We we pretty much are in each other's lives, as you would expect to, to some degree as mother and daughter. And I was watching it, really believing, because that's how it felt that you two had know each other, that you had cooked it up in terms of the way that you were going to bounce and stuff. So when you then told me afterwards via a voice note, um, you know, as we were just catching up, that you had met for the first time on that call, in yeah. that session, I was like, mom, how have you managed to wow me to a whole <laughs> nother level? And I'm your daughter and I know your life. And we don't just, we're not just, um, have our own personal relationship. We have a professional relationship as well as colleagues in the space. And I was like, wow, you did that so masterfully, both of you. And I think, yeah, that sorry. Was, that was amazing. So I feel like the way that that was put together, um, you know, just the, the combination of speakers. And I think every session Absolutely. felt that way. It was that that one was definitely well synchronized as someone who knows you mm. because it, it was it was a flawless delivery by both of you. You would think that you had worked together before. No, and I think, so, yeah. I think, 
kudos to, to Hannah as well. Yes, of course. She could easily have, and I don't know if she purposely knew each of our personalities and chose us for, for those, um, but she could easily, as host, have done it like a Q and A kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, but decided not to do that, and it mm-hmm. worked really well because it wasn't a case of um, like next question, mm-hmm. um, you know, directed to Sharon and Jeff. What you? It was just she. She just she just sat and observed mm-hmm. and was prepared to to come in with questions as needed. But the flow was just great, and I like. You know, the chat was going, uh, questions were going, and and it, and since then I've had um, a number of messages, people contacting me directly to say how much they valued it and all of that. And this isn't, a, you know, a, a thing to say, you know, uh, I'm an amazing conference speaker, so book me. Um, I mean, you are. <laughs> I am, put, that, yeah. put, put that plug in there. Put that plug in there. <laughs> it's, it's, more, it's, more, it's more to say this is what um, diversity in yes. its fullness yes. can look like, mm-hmm. meaning I'm not a traditional conference speaker. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm I I am very animated, I'm very passionate about what I what I do and the spaces that I occupy. And it's important that we bring who we are to every space. Yes. Bring who yes. we are to every space and just um be be just just, just be. be just be. Mm-hmm. You know, because somebody in the room um, is going to appreciate what what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Somebody in the room. So if you are attending a conference and you have a roundtable discussion, contribute. Mm-hmm. What's going on in your school mm-hmm. may be mirrored, may be a problem in your school, but another school around that table have solved it. Yes. Oh, and so you can, but whatever space you're in, don't be afraid to talk. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to exchange. Mm-hmm. And that to me is what makes conferences really good. Oh, mm. that's the okay. So oh, is that your takeaway? Or that's got, that's <laughs> gotta be my takeaway because I can't think of anything else. <laughs> no, honestly, like that was so profound, but so on point as well. I think my takeaway, just to to kind of bring this episode uh to a close, is very much linked to I feel like I had quite a personal moment in this episode and just speaking mm-hmm. about myself as a governor and what I attend and what I I don't attend like I genuinely um can't do everything and that's, and like, that's <laughs> fine that's fine it really is like, fine um and so my personal my my takeaway is linked to something that uh, I do personally so every year on my birthday so for the last few years um I like to set, so I don't see the 1st of January necessarily as a new year. I see the um, the 10th of December because that's my birthday. And mm-hmm. so I actually have a new year plan before the actual new calendar year. And mm-hmm. I like to set a theme or a thread for the 12 months of life that I have ahead of me. Mm-hmm. And the one that I set um, in at the end of 2022, um, on my last birthday was about um balance well about breathing balancing and believing and I think what's really rung out in this episode is the is the word balance in particular yeah um because it's a case of knowing that balance isn't necessarily 50 50 or an even split between everything that you're doing it's just understanding what side of the balance you are on or mm-hmm. what you're balancing in any given moment. And so um, taking the NAS conference, for example, where um, you were the host as the, the head of NAS, and um, we had a range of speakers, and I was in the back end. So I wasn't on camera, mm-hmm. but I was engaging with the chat. I was supporting with the tech. I was loading up the web page for the joining instructions and the Zoom link and everything like that, fully mm-hmm. in the back end. Um, and then full circle to the end of September as an employee of Governors for Schools, still in the back end, but I actually had a um, opportunity to explore a new skill. I had never hosted a panel discussion before, and I mm-hmm. did that for the first time yesterday for, for one of the sessions um, to support the capacity of the team. 
And I really enjoyed doing it. It was scary. It was, <laughs> it was very scary, even though I'm not one of the speakers. I'm really just asking questions and ensuring that each speaker has an equal amount of time to express their point of view or, you know, share their mm -hmm. knowledge and expertise and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so in that space, I'm then on a different side of the balance. I'm on the different side of the scale. And then here, the Governor's Podcast, where you're a host, I'm a host, our names, our faces are a part of this brand, the Governor's Podcast, and it's a different balance. And then me mm -hmm. being a school governor, that's a different balance. And yeah. trying to juggle all the things all the all yeah. in my space and just yeah. saying, Olivia, it is okay if you can't hold 100% all the time if you didn't mm. have 100% to begin with on that day or in it's that moment. It's more than okay. It's, it's more, more than, okay. than okay. And so I am learning that. So that's why I really appreciate when you said, like, I'm going to push back, push back. But you did it in such a compassionate way where I could then follow up and say, everything you're saying is everything that I've been feeling, mm -hmm. but just clarity on what, what my actual barrier was and being mm. able to say it's not about the conference it's not about me feeling over committed it's mm. about me just knowing that in order for me to stay as balanced as I can as a human being that is mm -hmm. the one thing I've had to say no to and I've mm -hmm. had to tell myself that that doesn't make me a bad governor that doesn't make me no. a bad person it just means no. I'm very conscious of my balance and so that's probably what I would want to take away for myself and also um, share with the listeners is like have that moment to to just almost like have a 360 view of yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, as well as the things that you feel like you would love to do or you haven't been a part of or you haven't been able to engage with please do not let that overshadow everything that you do actually give and mm. all the ways in which you do actually show up um, because you can surprise yourself at how much you actually have within when yeah. you actually look at yourself the way other people see you um, as well. When you take that moment to have like an outer body experience and uh, I'll leave you with this quote. I, I don't know the quote exactly, but something that I am, um, I've learned uh, recently in the last few weeks in terms of some of the mind feeding that I do on a daily basis. And it said, if you started with 30, percent at the end of at the beginning of the day and you gave your full 30 percent in whatever you did in that day then know that you gave the day everything you had everything absolutely and so yeah. you in in turn you gave a hundred percent of what yeah. you had of what you had yeah absolutely but even if it's not a hundred percent total yeah. because and we're not always at a hundred exactly and I yeah. think that was so powerful for me to read and I always seem to read these things right when I need them <laughs> um, I always do so I'm really hoping that someone has heard that right as they needed to listen to it um, but yeah that would be my takeaway to continue to understand what my balance is in any moment in any space perfect thanks for listening to today's episode please rate review and subscribe via your preferred streaming platform. The Governor's Podcast is a brand of the legal entity Education Governance Solutions Limited and a free training resource for anyone. So if you know someone who is interested in becoming a governor or a trustee, please share this podcast with them. And if you'd like to get in touch with us directly with questions or comments, then drop us an email at the Governor's Podcast at gmail.com you can also follow us on social media platforms at the governor's podcast let's connect